I looked around. <laughs> All around me were snakes. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. I apologize for my surroundings behind me. I'm in the field, and so this story time is brought to you straight from my field room. And this story time is going to be about my experience for one field season as a snake wrangler. So I asked you guys on Instagram what story you were interested in hearing, and they were almost all equal, so there's gonna be more story times, but this is going to be my experience as a snake wrangler, because that one was pretty requested. If you guys don't already know, I am a wildlife biologist currently in British Columbia, but I've worked across the world. But let's talk about snakes, shall we? Snake wrangling is kind of probably a stupid title. I made that up for myself, but it is like a snake monitor. I think a lot of times they'll call it snake monitor. If construction work is happening in areas with a high amount of snakes, they will often hire a snake monitor or a snake wrangler to actually be on site at the construction site when workers are present in order to capture and move snakes that move into the construction area. Or if it's like a road, um, they are on call to move snakes from the road, or sometimes people will work as snake wranglers um, for themselves as contractors, and people will call them in the local village or the local town to remove venomous snakes, pick them up, and put them somewhere else where they're gonna be much more suited to that environment. Also, too, you might be wondering how you actually get this job, and so some of the qualifications that I had when I got the job was I had about three and a half years of wildlife field work experience at the time and the job was being hired by a consulting company as a seasonal job and I think I saw the job on Indeed so um, I also had a bachelor's degree in ecology. So Alberta has six resident snakes and those are the snakes that I worked with over this summer. Bull snakes, plains garter snakes, prairie rattlesnakes, red-sided garter snakes, wandering garter snakes, and western hog-nosed snakes. The only one really of concern there is the prairie rattlesnake. Um, some of the other snakes can be aggressive, but are not really too much of a danger to humans. So I was basically hired by different construction companies to go out to the site to be a snake expert and to move all the snakes that come across the construction site and to make sure that there are no snakes hiding the little nooks and crannies when workers are working in order to keep them safe. So the tools <laughs> that a snake wrangler uses are uh, snake traps or snake gators and those go around your leg and they provide like a bit of a protection so that if a snake is in tall grass and it lunges at you it doesn't grab onto your leg and instead bounces off like a plastic or a leather snake gator. Another tool that a snake wrangler has is like a long device designed to pick up snakes. It almost looks similar to like either a hook or a or like a garbage picker and a bucket. So the bucket serves as a vehicle for transporting the snake to its new habitat. Day-to-day -day life was I would arrive on site at usually pretty early whenever workers start work and the very first worker that steps foot onto that site I would accompany them or go ahead of them. So I would basically be using a long stick and batting at the grass and batting at the bushes in order to flush any snakes that might be hiding in those little bushy clumps out so that I can see them and that I can move them so there aren't going to be any surprises when the construction workers go on through. So I'm walking through the site kind of batting at these little brushes and just seeing if any snakes come out. If I do see a snake, grab it with the snake tongs, stick it in the bucket, and relocate it to a new location that has suitable habitat for that type of snake. So that's a big important part is that if I do find it, when I do find snakes, I don't want to just go throw them in a ditch on the other side of the road. I want to take them far away from a road where they're not going to have their little snaky selves hurt and somewhere that has suitable habitat for them. So places with lots of cover where they can go and hide, um, you know, not in anyone's backyard or anything like that, somewhere with suitable safe habitat for the snake. I never personally got bit by any of the snakes, but I had quite a few of them lunge at me, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. But uh, I'm gonna finish my day, day in the life of a snake wrangler. So 
um, go to your site and then once we've done that initial sweep of site uh, it got really easy because really I spent most of the time sitting in my truck and then like every hour I'd go out and bat at the same bushes again do rounds around the construction site so if I had to move a snake that took way longer that took most of my hour away from me right there um, or I was out scoping out for potential habitat so that if I did have a snake I already had a good idea of where to go so that was one job that I did. I also did snake hibernacula surveys at the same time. So snake hibernacula is basically the areas where snakes go um, in over winter. So it's really weird in Alberta snakes, all snakes except I believe the hognose snake will overwinter in the same hibernacula. So most of the time that I was working it was like going into fall. So the snakes were slowly starting to move to the hibernacula getting ready for winter. They would kind of go in, go out before they finally plunk down for the season and stay in there and don't come out. But uh, yeah, they were all kind of hanging out around the hibernacula. And so a lot of times I'd get asked to go to an old hibernacula, like one that was identified a year or two years before and just check to see if it's active. <laughs> Oh, you know, sometimes you, you just say yes to things and you don't actually think about uh, what that actually means. It's, hey, can you go to this active rattlesnake hibernacula and see if there's snakes in there? And yeah, that's pretty much how you check if they're active. You go peek in there and see if there's some snakes all curled up in there and they rattle at you. <laughs> I would have my GPS, so it would be leading me right to the little hole where the, all the snakes are. And I was walking this hibernacula, and I look in it, and I'm like, oh, there's nothing. Like, this is an abandoned hibernacula. There's definitely no snakes here. I heard this little rattle, and it was like just a teeny, teeny little faint rattle. And I was like, I looked in the hibernacula, and there was the, the cutest prairie rattlesnake in there that I have ever seen and those of you who don't like snakes might not think that snakes are cute but his little black eyes were so big and he was looking at me with his little rattle and he was so scared and they're just such sweethearts <laughs> like I love snakes so much um, and he was being pretty calm and he was just giving me a little warning like hey buddy like this is my hibernacula I'm in here you know don't let them dig it up or construct over it like I'm here and I was like thank you buddy then I was like okay all good made that note on my field sheet that the hibernacula is occupied and then I looked around <laughs> all around me were snakes and they weren't friendly ones like the little guy in the hibernacula I they blended in with the grass so well that walking through to the hibernacula I didn't realize that I was in a field of snakes like dozens of snakes all around this hibernacula I just got lucky that I didn't step on one on the way in I heard rattling all around and some of them were not even rattlesnakes but the I believe it's the bull snakes will actually imitate the sound of a prairie rattlesnake for an intimidation factor so it was rattling there were snakes like curled up they like lunging 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 at me and I had to like oh my god I was so scared I had to like get out of there but like everywhere I stepped there were snakes so I swear when I was trying to get out of there I was like it was like dancing like um like I was like skipping through a field of snakes but I was like I can't even like imitate it. I was like trotting, trying to step over to the one snakeless areas of grass as I was running out. And then I finally got to a point where there was no more snakes anymore. And I was like, oh, I did not get bit. But so many of them were kind of like, I didn't mind so much actually finding the snakes and like picking them up and relocating them. It was when I didn't see the snakes that was the scary part. It's a really good way to get in the field, help snakes, and you know, to be honest, a lot of these snakes are really vilified. And in some countries, the snakes are actually killed because people are so afraid of them, and sometimes they'll misidentify the species and kill a completely harmless snake. So being a snake wrangler, you're able to 
safely take and remove the snake from a dangerous habitat, dangerous to the people and dangerous to the snake itself, and move it to somewhere where it's, it's happy and content and it's not gonna hurt anyone. That's a little bit of a look into what a snake wrangler does and my summer as a snake wrangler. If you guys wanna see more videos like this, uh, click the subscribe button down below to subscribe to my channel. Any of you guys scared of snakes? Uh, let me know in the comment section down below and I will see you next time. Bye.